what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be looking at a very specific type of rate. And this is one that hopefully all of you have come across. And this is the idea of speed. Now, speed, as a lot of you may know, I'd hope, is pretty much just the measure of how fast an object is traveling, how fast you're running, how fast your car drives. It's pretty much a description of how fast something is going. And we measure this in relation to two other types of things. And we're gonna talk about those in just a second. But for the purposes of this video, we are talking about, we're just gonna be talking at const, uh, talking about, sorry, I should say, constant speeds. So imagine, for example, you're driving on a highway and you just click on the cruise control and your car drives itself, maintaining a constant speed. We're not looking at too many changing speeds so far in this topic. We're looking at constant speed. And a constant speed is when the speed pretty much when the speed doesn't change. Now, let's fix this. Imagine you are in a car. And you're driving along a highway. Now, when you get on this highway, you end up flicking on the cruise control. You're sick of, um, you're, there's open road ahead of you. You just want to click on the cruise control and kind of relax a little bit. Not really relax, please don't relax behind the wheel, of course, but you you are just gonna flick on the cruise control so you don't have to worry about the speed changing. You find whatever the speed limit is on the highway and then you flick on cruise control. Now, let's say you are here and you end up here, a little bit further down the highway. Um, and this is at a, some later point in time, right? Now we look at, we measure speed by saying, okay, well, first let's look at how far I've actually traveled. Now let's say along this highway, I traveled 240 kilometers. And that's one unit of measurement. And now we said that rates and speed is a type of rate. These involve two types of quantities, two types of units of measurement. What's another one we can use? Well, we can use time as well. So we can say, cool, we've traveled 240 kilometers and the time passed between here and here Let's say we have been driving for two hours and we're going to ask ourselves, well, what can, what would our speed be? How can I represent my speed as a rate that relates distance and time? Well, I can say using what we've done so far, I can think of this as I have traveled 240 kilometers in two hours. And we talked in the very, at the very start of the rates topic that when we express any rate, we're writing it as the first unit per one unit of measurement here. So whatever we're using on the right hand side, whether it's hours, whether it's minutes, whether it's whatever, we do it to one unit of that. So here we have, I've gone 240 kilometers in two hours. How far have I traveled in one hour? And I can find that by just dividing both of these by two using the unitary method, right? Something we're very familiar with so far. Because I've been given 240 kilometers in two hours. 
how far have I traveled in one hour? And I end up getting that I've traveled 120 kilometers per hour or per one hour. And this thing here is what we think of as my speed. Two, 120 kilometers per hour. Now let's actually just look at what we've done here. You can see that in getting this type of speed, a way we got 120 is we took 240 and we divided it by this number. Now that's quite curious. In essence, what we have done to find speed is we have divided the distance traveled by the time taken. And this is how we define speed or an average speed in this particular course. How we define speed is um, speed, I'll put here average in brackets. We define that as an equation which takes our distance traveled and divides it by the time taken. Now, a little shortcut, quick way of writing this, which you see in your textbooks, is S or speed equals D divided by T. Speed equals distance divided by time. Now, we have defined speed now using an equation. And what makes equations so powerful is that we can plug any values into any of these and we can solve it for any of these pronumerals. We can find speed, we can find distance, we can find time using a bunch of different values. And this equation here, speed equals distance divided by time, it's very useful for a wide range of questions that you'll encounter. Now let's do a couple of these. Now we'll do another question just on average speed, just so you guys can practice. So in question one, I want to find the average speed of um, three kilometers in 15 minutes. So let's say this is a person running. The average speed of traveling three kilometers in 15 minutes. Now, I'm gonna do this once again, just so you can see that this isn't just a coincidence. I'm gonna approach this with my unitary method hat on once again. So I'm gonna say I travel three kilometers in 15 minutes. And what I'm going to do is I want to find the speed. So I let's find this as, um, let's find this in kilometers per minute because we, we've been doing kilometers per hour before. Let's try another type of unit because speed is anytime we measure a unit of distance or a unit of length, unit of distance, per a unit of time. Now, three kilometers in 15 minutes, I can find this by going, all right, well, how far have I traveled in one minute, per one minute? I can do that by dividing both sides by 15. And this is going to give me this equivalent speed, this equivalent rate, but just as a distance per minute rather than per 15 minutes. And when I do that, I get 0.2 kilometers per minute. Now, 
I can express this in hours as well if I want to. I'll leave that to you guys actually. You can do this for a bit of homework. You can convert to kilometers per hour. And you've done this before. We've done this in previous videos. It's just a matter of getting this to an hour and thinking, all right, well, how many minutes are there in an hour? And then finding the equivalent rate. Now, if we wanted to do another question, we can proceed in a very similar way. But before we do that, let's just look at what we did again. To find 0 0.2 kilometers per minute, we took my distance and divided it by my time. I took three, I divided it by 15 to get me 0 0.2. <coughs> so anytime I'm finding speed, I'm thinking of taking my distance traveled and dividing it by the time taken to travel that distance. Okay. So this formula then ends up being really powerful. This speed equals distance divided by time. Now, if we take this formula that relates speed, distance, and time, I'm going to show you something pretty interesting because we can use this to solve some other questions because sometimes we're not given the distance and the time. Sometimes we may be given the speed and the distance or the time, for example. Now in question two, I'm going to say, find, the distance traveled by a truck traveling 15 hours at a speed of, let's go, 95 kilometers an hour. Sorry, that's really messy. Let me rewrite that. Of 90, whoops. Speed of 95 kilometers per hour. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and for all of these questions, I would encourage you to write out this formula that we've established here. This speed equals distance divided by time. And what we're going to do here, because now we're working with an equation instead of a rate unitary method type of thing. We now have the power to think of this as purely an equation. And you'll see when we substitute everything in, it ends up being a pretty easier end of the spectrum of equation that we can solve. So what am I given here? Well, I'm given a time and a speed. So I'm going to pop both of these into my equation. So I'm going to put my speed here, 95 equals distance divided by 15 hours. And now I just have that more 95 equals a distance divided by 15. Now, if you remember with solving equations, I can say, well, this D has been divided by 15 to give me 95. So I can find what D is by timesing both sides by 15. This will kill that and leave us with D on its own. That gives me that my D, my distance equals 95 multiplied by 15. And that ends up giving me 1,425 kilometers. Now, something important to note here is that when we do any operations with these types of things, we're also 
multiplying the units as well. So not only are we multiplying 95 by 15, we are multiplying kilometers per hour by kilometers. So on a little aside down the bottom, we are multiplying kilometers divided by an hour by an hour here. And if we think of these as like algebraic terms, so this is kilometers divided by an hour multiplied by an hour. So the multiplication actually undoes, undoes, sorry, this division. So we get actually left with kilometers which makes sense because that is what we end up getting here because we're, we're looking for a distance. So it makes sense that we're going to get an answer in a unit of distance. And we get the same thing by multiplying the two units in the equation together. Now let's look at one more question. And this is finding the time taken now. So we've looked at finding the average speed. We've looked at finding the distance. Now let's look at finding the time taken. So find the time um, of walking four kilometers per hour to travel 15 kilometers. So I want to find out how far, I'm sorry, how long it's taken to travel this far at this speed. And with all speed questions, the first thing I'm going to do is write out this relationship. And from now, from this point on, I can just substitute everything in. So I have that four kilometers per hour. I'll show you the little unit trick at the end as well, but that equals my distance of 15 divided by my time. And now I want to solve this equation here. I have that 15 is being divided by T and it gives me four on the left-hand side. Now I wanna get the time taken on its own, this pronumeral of T on its own in the equation. And what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna multiply both sides by T because I want, that's gonna, well, kill it from the denominator here and that's gonna leave it up here when we multiply four by T. So I get that four T Four times T gives me 15. Now to find what the time taken is, well, I'm going to undo this multiplying by four and I'm going to end up dividing both sides by four. So I get that my time equals 15 over four. And here we're looking at hours, we have kilometers per hour, and that is my answer. Now let's just check that the unit here that we got is correct. And I'm gonna multiply the units now. Now I think at, at this stage of schooling, I don't think you're expected to do this, but I'm including it just so you can understand why this works and why we get, when we multiply these, the hours. We're not just pulling this out of thin air. We're always gonna get hours because we are, when we multiply the units as well, or divide the units, we're gonna end up with, it's gonna simplify to units in hours. So if I had here, I'm essentially dividing my um, 15 was my distance. I'm dividing my distance by my speed. See, I'm taking my distance, I'm dividing it by speed. So what I'm essentially doing is I am, taking my kilometers and I'm dividing them by my kilometers per hour. Now, when I divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this I can write as kilometers times hours on 
kilometers. Now, hopefully this isn't anything new. I've looked at multiplying fractions before, so please go to one of those videos if this is brand new. And I'm gonna see once again that my kilometers here cancel with my kilometers here. Because in essence, I'm saying hours divided by kilometers times kilometers. Well, these two cancel out to just be one, or one lot of hours. And then that is gonna give me a measurement in hours, which is the exact thing I got here. And we would expect that, right? Because we are looking for time. So we want our answer to be a unit of time. But this is how we can approach speed questions. And hopefully at this stage, you've got an idea for how this formula works that we derived, as well as the different ways we can manipulate the formula. Now, all you need is this thing here. All you need is my speed equals distance over time. You don't even really have to memorize it, right? Think to any time you're driving, you know your car's showing a speed, it's giving you kilometers per hour. So the what's implied there by the per is a division. It's distance divided by time. And using this formula, you can actually come up with the formulas for with distance as the subject or time as the subject as well. Because I can write this as, for example, my distance equals speed times time. We found that in one of our other questions here. And I did that by just multiplying by T here. I got S times T on the left and D on its own on the right. And we can kind of flip those around here. Anyway, I've just put the distance on the left of my equation. And I also get that time is divided, is equal to, sorry, distance divided by speed, which is what happens when we multiplied by time once again, and then we divided by speed. And that gave us time on its own on the left-hand side and the distance divided by speed on its own on the right-hand side. But what I'm trying to get at is don't just now go, okay, I need to memorize this formula and this formula. No, you actually don't because it's an equation, right? As long as you know how to work with an equation, all you need is this guy over here. And then you can just make any of the other units the subject by working with the equations like we've been doing in previous topics and what you've been doing earlier in school. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.